Food is more than just what's on our plate. It's the places where it's grown, it's the people who grow it, and so much more. Join me, Janice Person, your host, on Grounded by the Farm every other week as we talk about the foods we love. I'm not sure about you, but how many times have you gotten on social media or seen on the news that today is National Blank Day? Someday, you're not sure what it is, you're not sure why it's happening or anything, but other days, it's a day or a week that's honoring something that's really close to home. This week is National Agriculture Week, and what I wanted to do was check in with a number of different farmers and just sort of understand what all is happening in different places and at different times, not only around the country, but also around the world. And so I've asked several people to provide us a bit of an update on how things are going in their area. And we have a few of our previous international guests who sent in things and we asked them about whether they have something like Agriculture Week or something there. And here I am on Monday morning, March 21st. I don't know about all of you, but oh my God, I'm so happy spring is here and the sun is out. We've got some rain coming, but it's typical spring. And in the midst of all of this, I got the uh, heads up on whitehouse.gov had done the new presidential action. And this happens every year for National Agriculture Day. But I thought I would just read this first paragraph about what it's about, Ag Day and Ag Week. This starts the quote from the statement. It is from President Biden. On National Agriculture Day, we recognize the invaluable contributions of American farmers, farm workers, ranchers, fishers, foresters, and other agricultural workers who practice their craft for generations and touch the lives of Americans every day. Their tireless efforts growing crops, raising livestock, and distributing food, fuel, and fiber sustain America and the entire world. They put meals on our plates, clothes on our backs, and roofs over our heads. Along the way, America's agricultural workers serve as stewards of the land, ensure the safety and health of animals, plants, and people, and strengthen our rural communities with economic opportunities. Now, President Biden's quote, his statement goes on to talk about, you know, what's been happening over the last couple of years and working on resiliency in the food system and things along that line. I will put the link in the uh, show notes, so feel free to check that out. But I just wanted to see what are different farmers doing? What are they, what do they have going on? Some of the people you'll hear from are people you've heard from on the show previously, and you're also going to hear from a couple of farmers that maybe I haven't had a chance to talk to yet, or maybe grow something a little bit different, but I'm not sure how I'm going to work that into an episode quite yet, but I'll get there eventually. Before we start the episode itself, I do want to say Um, We're going to take a really short break in episodes for just a few weeks. We're going to come back. It's still going to be season three, but with all this spring excitement, I also want to get out of the office a little bit and get out again and be able to do some video and visit some people, see what they're doing. And so we're going to take just a couple of weeks off and be back soon. So please make sure you're subscribed. We'll be back. We do have some other stuff going up on our website. So you can always check that out at groundedbythefarm.com. In between each segment from a farmer, I'm just going to put a little bit of music to transition between each other so that you know when we're about to hit another person's. Okay. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the first farmer update. Let's see what part of the country or the world we're going to. Hi, Janice. This is Rebecca Larson, the chief scientist from Western Sugar Cooperative. You may remember me from the episode we did on sugar. As far as the sugar beet world right now, we're just wrapping up our 2021 campaign, which is the slicing of the sugar beets from last year that we're turning into sugar. And we're just getting ready to plant our 2022 crop coming up this April. 
2021 was the most normal year we've had in a really long time. No major weather disruptions and really good storage conditions. So we're really hoping for more of the same this year. For us, Ag Day is really every day where we're trying to continually educate the public about the environmental wins that our farmers are having around soil and crop health. But a few growers from across the cooperative will take advantage of some of the Ag Day at the Capitol events and postings on social media to talk about their specific stories around sustainability. Personally, for me, there's another sweet holiday on the horizon, and I'm really excited about getting to work baking dozens of bunny-themed treats for our annual brunch and Easter egg hunt. Thanks for reaching out, and I hope that Ag Week treats you well. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, everyone. This is Rachel Singo with Melon One. You might remember me from the episode all about watermelon. Our watermelon operation is in full swing right now. We have all of our planting completed in Florida, and we're just beginning to plant in South Georgia. So we will slowly make our way up the East Coast, uh, planting at all of our farms as we go, which will lead to a staggered out harvest season through the spring and summer, all the way through Labor Day. So there will be plenty of grown-in-the-USA watermelons in your store soon. We're going to start our South Florida harvest in about two weeks. We hope you're excited for them the same way we are. We hope it's going to be another great season. Bye, y'all. Hi, guys. My name's Ben Cross over here, the other side of the pond in the UK on the south coast of England. You may remember my podcast uh, talking about my British Flowers Rock campaign. I'm a fourth generation flower grower here at Crossland's Flower Nursery and uh, thought I'd give you an update as it's your National Ag Week. We're here at the moment. I'm sat in one of the greenhouses, gorgeous sunshine in here in um, down here in Sussex on the south coast of the UK and um, the Ulstrom area is looking pretty dang good loads of nice shoots popping up from the soil and um, it's Mother's Day here in the UK next week as well so we're very very busy harvesting the crop processing the crop and get it getting it sent out to all our beautiful lovely uh, lovely customers so that's what we've been doing recently our winter weather we've got through we've only had two frosts here over the winter and now we're in spring and that's when we're really going to be in season so we harvest all year round but we'll be harvesting seven days a week very very soon doing millions and millions of stems throughout the year and thousands of bunches a day so really really going very well here hope you're having a good uh, ag week and um, yeah, we don't actually celebrate um, any sort of horticulture, agriculture, uh, this side of the pond. But I do my British Flowers Rock campaign all year round. And I also invite um, the general public. And we actually have tours of the, the ranch here, the flower ranch here as well. I promote British sustainable blooms flowers all year round so if you want to know more about me you can find me on instagram at ulstrom area ben or you can type in ben cross into instagram and you can find me that way keep rocking sustainable uh, produce take it easy guys bye hey guys good morning this is lauren arbogast you may remember me from the podcast about chickens and beef and all things farm here in virginia I am excited that next week is National Ag Week. Uh, So as a teacher, we do lots of fun stuff in the classroom to tie it in. Sometimes we have guest readers, um, but we always do a lot of stuff to connect the kids with their food and their fiber and where that comes from. So you might hear some uh, peeping in the background. Those are the little chickens. I'm currently checking chickens right now, making sure that they are all right, making sure they've got their food and their water. The AC isn't turned on yet. The heat kind of is. We're enjoying some mild temperatures here in Virginia right now. On the beef side, we all the cows have calves, and they are just loving the new green grass that's coming on. We're still feeding a little bit of hay uh, to help supplement, make sure that everybody's got what they need. But the cows are really excited about the green grass and the warmer temperatures, and so am I. So looking forward to some more springtime and actually summertime activities coming up. But, yeah, we're also watching some prices rise across the board on the farm, which is something that happens in all aspects of life. So the farm is no exception to that. But we are we just take it day by day and adjust as needed. We're super flexible, but we also realize that the cost that we absorb, we also may have to pass on to consumers. So that's um, just something that we take into account as we look at our 
products and things that come off the farm. Happy National Ag Week, you guys. Have a great week. Hi folks, it's Farmer Tom here. Uh, you may remember me from the episode on sheep, cheese and farmer time. Uh, anyway, we're sending you our greetings from here in the east of England. We're right on the Great North, the old Great North Road, where nearly a thousand years ago in September 1066, King Harold marched his army from having won the Battle of Stamford Bridge in the north, right past us here uh, to the Battle of Hastings in October 1066, when of course he famously got shot in the eye with an arrow. But we are sending you our blessings from uh, uh, from here in the UK. We're having a lovely dry spring, getting ready for some of our spring planting. We've been putting some fantastic soil conditioning bacteria and some nitrogen fixers on the soil this week. And in fact, just to my side, you can see the beginning of our community vegetable patch where we're pooling our resources of 20 families and producing all our veg, hopefully, uh, from back here. Food is so important at the moment, and so I'm really excited uh, about National Ag Week. We don't really have that here in the UK. We have Black British Farming Day, but it's so important. Our food is so important. Agriculture is so important. The environment is so important. So I wish you all the best from here in the UK. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Uh, hi, this is Marie Bowers from Oregon. I grow grass seed used in cover crops, lawns, and pastures for the sheep and the cows and everything else that eats grass. Oregon's known for growing grass seed because we have really dry, hot summers and really cool, mild, wet winters. And so it's perfect growing conditions for grass seed. And we just have to deal with the rain and the mud this time of year. And we've actually gotten less rain than normal, but it's still, you know, the rain's still here and it's still raining in the springtime like it does in Oregon. You can see right now in some of the fields, they're getting more of a yellowish tint to it because they're running out of nitrogen. And so that's why we go on this time of year and spread the fertilizer so it greens back up and starts growing to be harvested in June, July. This time of year, we get like short windows of opportunities to spread our fertilizer. It's hoping for another dry week to finish spreading because we like to get on before the end of April. And it's raining today and there's water still running out of the fields. This year, fertilizer prices are almost double. I was looking at my numbers and um, last year we paid $389 a ton for spring fertilizer. And then this year it's $837 a ton. <laughs> so I'm like calculating my fertilizer granulars down to the exact granular practically. So I don't get too much. And then the price of diesel is outrageous. I think today I could buy 10,000 gallons for over $4. And I felt sick to my stomach in November when I paid $2.70 for 10,000 gallons of diesel. Now I feel really smart. Our price of grass seed hasn't changed really since last year. And so last year prices were decent, but the prices of all of our inputs have gone up drastically, which is not sustainable. I'm looking forward to getting fertilizing done so then I can go camping with the family, go Easter egg hunting with my son. And then as a weird side hobby, I dabble in politics and I'm excited for this year's primary race because I want my candidate to win and register to vote. <laughs> hey, this is Brian Scott. I am a corn, soybean, popcorn, and wheat farmer from Northwest Indiana. It's a beautiful 70 degree day outside. About to go back to 50s and gloomy and rainy. We've been kind of wet here as much as the rest of the country to the west of us has been dry, so we're kind of waiting on drying out. Our planter is ready to go. We had some fertilizer run last week. Uh, we've been spending a lot of our time taking advantage of these grain markets, hauling grain we have in storage or forward contracting it for this summer, as well as locking in some profits on the 22 crop that's yet to be planted. So. In a little bit of a holding pattern now, I'll wait on weather to kick off the 2022 planting season, and then we will be off and rolling before we know it. It's spring break this week. Our oldest boy is actually with his cousin down in Florida, checking out the beach and the ocean and all that good stuff down there. And we are taking our youngest and another niece to Nashville the second half of this week. So we'll be down in Tennessee for spring break, and then now back to the farm for the end of March. Hello everyone, this is Priyanka Gupta, recently moved from Morocco to Canada. Here, I started working a new project that is the protection of wheat across the America against the challenges of climate change. You may remember me from the episode which focuses on grass pea. The good news is this, now grass pea is growing in America. I would like to express my sincere thanks to spread awareness of this potential crop for climate change. 
and i would like to take opportunity to wish you all a healthy happy and prosperous national agriculture week particularly our growers those who work in acres not in hours thank you hey this is bob walker from somerville tennessee and i grow cotton corn soybeans and we have cattle uh, this week on our farm here in somerville we're doing some dirt work for spring preparations, fixing a few terraces and such, doing a little drainage work. Uh, biggest thing we've got going on here on the farm right now is going around the edges of the fields and pushing back where we had some ice storm damage from lots of trees down around most all of our fields. We're still feeding a few cows. We're in the middle of calving season. We'll finish that up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, just lots going on here. I uh, hope everybody has a great week and come see us sometime. Thank you much. Hi, this is Carolyn Etch and I grow feed corn, hay and straw in New Jersey. This time of year, we're not in the field yet. That will come in May and June for us. So right now we're selling last year's crop. We have a retail hay barn so customers visit us six days a week for their animals hay to feed and straw for bedding. We also sell quite a bit of mulch straw to landscapers as they're starting their spring cleanup in their neighbor's yards right about now. We do sell the corn we grow to a broker in Pennsylvania and trucks come in um, weekly now to transport a tractor trailer load to chicken farms. So we're growing the corn for your chicken nugget. And this week for National Ag Day, I'll be teaching two workshops called Teachers on the Farm. The State Agriculture in the Classroom organization has three of us and will be presenting this to teachers throughout New Jersey. With lessons, hands-on programming, and a farm tour, those will be the highlights. So that's what's happening on the farm for National Ag Week. Thank you. All right, this is Farmer Derek down here in Kansas, and I've been watching my live cams all winter after I put them up this summer. I've got a live cam for cows. There's cattle in a pen, and people can watch them and can also send a super chat of at least a dollar. And then feed will shoot out of this live cam, and then the cat will come over and eat it. They also get scratched, so I built this cow stretcher, and you can just type in spin in chat, and it'll start spinning, and it'll scratch them. They've currently destroyed it, so I have to um, fix that. Another live cam I have is for white-tailed deer. And the deer come, and you can control the camera. You can type in left or right, up and down, in and out, and the camera will move. I had to make it members only. I had so many spammers messing up the camera. You can also feed the deer the same way as the cow cam. And there is possums and coons that come and eat, and we've had a bobcat a few times. My other cam is an owl cam at this eagle nest. The owls took it over, and the owls came back, laid an egg, and a coon got up there while Bonnie was out taking a break. I think the coon must have made a hole in the egg because eventually they aborted the egg and left it, and then the coons came and ate some really sad owls. But, you know, life goes on. Nature's crazy. Have fun. It's going to be here in the next 10 to 20 years to see because I think I'm eventually going to have eagles because there's so many eagles moving down into this country. We have a lot of cattle on the farm right now, and then we will start shipping them out once the grass greens up out in the Flint Hills, and it's awesome. It's fun. And then I'll probably start doing some more live cams. Of course, I've got some crazy ideas. Stay tuned, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Well, hey, Janice and listeners. This is John from Ferndale Market, and uh, you might remember me uh, from the episode on my family's third-generation turkey farm in southern Minnesota. Appreciate the chance to give a quick update here. I will say there's never a dull moment in farming, and that sure seems to be true these days. Uh, the things that we seem to be spending a lot of our time on and thinking about are all of the rising costs in our world. The, the cost for feed has of course, gone up significantly along with uh, the cost for processing turkeys and for freight. So I have spent a lot of time recently uh, helping our customers understand that it, it just costs a lot more to 
to raise um, and sell a turkey than it did a year ago. And so those have been the, the not so much fun conversations with our with our customers, helping them understand the very real need for uh, some price increases, which is a little unique for us being in the in the world of direct selling the turkeys that we raise. And then the other thing we've been thinking a lot about, unfortunately, is avian influenza. Your listeners might have heard there is a scary strain of avian influenza. Thankfully, at this point, uh, no cases in Minnesota, but uh, certainly always on our minds, and uh, we're doing everything that we can to to remain protected and keep our flocks well. But it is a a scary thing for all poultry farmers anywhere, and our hearts sure go out to, to those folks who have had losses. I like to finish on a high note, so I will say on the plus side, this time of year is, is always a, a great time of activity and rhythm here on the farm. In the next few weeks, we'll be getting our turkeys back outside. We'll be brooding a lot more poults here in the coming months to get ready for our big Thanksgiving push. So this is a, a time with a lot of a lot of energy. Um, despite despite some of those downers that I started with, it is really a, a good time with a lot of momentum heading into the, the summer and fall here on our farm. So thank you so much for thinking of farmers uh, during National Ag Week and uh, giving us a chance to provide an update uh, with what's happening here at Ferndale. Take care. Hey, this is John Dinsmore from the winter lettuce capital of the world. How y'all doing? Just wanted to give you an update that we're starting to wrap up the produce season for the time being, and as we do, we're making sure all of our wheat, uh, alfalfa, sedan grass, and other summer crops are getting finished putting in the ground. It's been a pretty busy season, had a lot to learn, but that's what makes this industry so great. We're always doing something new and innovative. Hope you all have a wonderful Ag Week. My kids are going to be learning a lot in their classes, and we'll be talking to you all soon. Adios. I hope you guys found that interesting, catching up with a dozen people in different parts of the U.S. and a few outside the U.S., looking at what's happening during National Ag Week. It really is a time, I think, to more than thank a farmer. It's to more discover what happens in this wonderful world of agriculture that a lot of us aren't lucky enough to live in day in and day out. And yet it's where our food is grown and and what comes from it. I hope you found the episode interesting and you want to share it on with other people. You'll find a map on social media. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook. We have a a nice map of where all these folks are from. If you'd like to check that out, share it with some friends, tell them what they're missing when they listen to Grounded by the Farm the first time. They'll thank you. We'll see you again in a few weeks. Remember, we're going to take a short break before we come back and do some more of these. Thank you.